So uh, inflammatory bowel disease. So IBD is an inflammatory bowel disease. Um, it's a chronic illness uh, involving the bowel. Uh, well, that I mean, it's, a, it's an illness that uh, has quite a long duration. Um, symptoms can be quite varied. Uh, and that really reflects the fact that inflammatory bowel disease is quite a, a broad spectrum of, of illness. It, um, it can affect any part of the bowel, uh, really, as we say, from the mouth right down to the anus. Um, and there are different conditions that fall under that umbrella of uh, IBD. On one end, we have things like uh, ulcerative colitis, which is uh, a disease that largely involves the large bowel, otherwise known as the colon. And the other end is uh, conditions such as Crohn's disease, which is again, an inflammatory condition, which it can affect any part of the, the bowel, from the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small bowel, but more commonly, uh, small bowel and the large bowel. And in some patients, there is also disease involving the anal canal. So uh, inflammatory bowel disease um, can present again in a number of ways and uh, patients often uh, will come to see a doctor by largely two routes really. They will either uh, see um, gastroenterologists or see surgeons. Uh, to come uh, to a surgical uh, consultation, typically patients will present with something like a rectal bleeding or change in the bowel habit with diarrhea or abdominal pain. Uh, and similarly, that can be the, the symptoms they present to a gastroenterologist with. Um, but, uh, in order to make that diagnosis, often people will need a series of investigations. Um, and if you think about what we're trying to assess for is looking to see whether there's inflammation involved in the bowel. So that may mean having um, a series of blood tests, may mean uh, carrying out endoscopies, such as a colonoscopy or a, a gastroscopy. And these are tests where a flexible camera is, is inserted into the uh, lumen of the bowel, uh, either through the mouth or through the bottom. Um, and there may be need for scans such as CT scans or MRI scans. So those are the broad tests that we carry out. And depending on the gain symptoms, there may be need to exclude some conditions as infective conditions and so stool samples uh, and so on. So there are a, a series of tests that are carried out largely prompted by the patient's symptoms. Um, the, co the cause of IBD is a little bit more difficult. Um, there is, we don't really know what causes inflammatory bowel disease. Um, it is a condition that's um, increasingly prevalent. Again, we don't really know why that is. Um, there may be some association with um, Western lifestyle, diet, environmental factors, and certainly it appears that the, uh, the prevalence of inflammatory bowel disease is increasing across the world, again, perhaps really reflecting the changes in lifestyle in other parts of the world as well. But we don't really know what causes it. There is almost certainly an element of predisposition. Uh, we know that there is um, certainly a uh, increased likelihood of uh, having inflammatory bowel disease if, if other members of the family are also involved. Um, so certainly there's um, uh, increased frequency in, in twins, for example, or within siblings, and if there's a uh, family member involved. Um, that probably more re uh, reflects that uh, if you have got family history, it means that the factors that influence others to develop inflammatory bowel disease have more of an effect uh, if you've got a family history for it. So you're almost predisposed to developing it, but it's not a certainty. You won't definitely get inflammatory bowel disease if you have another family member that has it. Um, so uh, inflammatory bowel disease is, is a chronic condition and that really reflects that, the fact that it's not, a, a condition that can be cured. Certainly Crohn's disease uh, is best regarded as a condition that cannot be cured. Um, it can be controlled. It is um, certainly increasingly with uh, newer medications. Um, Crohn's disease can be 
kept under control. Symptoms can be kept to a minimum. And the majority of patients can live perfectly a normal life with few symptoms. Um, in some cases, despite medical treatments, the condition can get worse. Um, and as it progresses, that's when surgery comes into play. And through a combination of medical treatment and surgery, where the diseased bowel can be removed, uh, often patients can then return to a normal quality of life. Uh, and uh, if surgery is required, depending on the severity of disease, uh, with the additional uh, management of uh, or the use of medical treatment, again, the disease can be kept under control. Uh, with ulcerative colitis, uh, that's a slightly different uh, situation. It is because it largely affects the colon or the large bowel. In patients where medical treatment alone doesn't keep things under control, if we then need to carry out surgery, surgery often means removing the large bowel. And if you then remove the large bowel in its entirety, the section of bowel that's affected by the disease is gone. So in effect, the patient is cured of the disease. Uh, having said that, while inflammatory bowel disease largely affects the bowel itself, the best way of looking at it, inflammatory bowel disease is that it's a inflammatory condition and the inflammation doesn't necessarily only confine itself to the bowel. And in some cases, patients will also exhibit inflammatory disease outside of the bowel. So joints, uh, skin, eyes, etc. And so um, often that goes hand in hand with the severity of the disease. So if you've got a really badly diseased bowel, then removing the diseased bowel often means the inflammatory condition improves. And if you have what we call extra intestinal manifestations, so you know, joint pains, etc., that may also improve um, hand in hand. So as I say, in terms of what cure means, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, to sum that up there, uh, therefore, it's to say if you have uh, Crohn's disease, it is best viewed as a non-curable condition, but the condition can be kept under control through a combination of medicine and surgery. Uh, and with, with ulcerative colitis, uh, where surgery is necessary, in theory, one can cure the patient of the disease. Right, so um, in terms of managing inflammatory bowel disease, um, there is some uh, common uh, factors in terms of you know, treating ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Um, in the majority of patients with ulcerative colitis, the disease has a sort of relapsing, remitting course. You may get a flare-up of the disease and patients typically will get some abdominal pains, maybe some diarrhea and, and blood in their stools. Um, most patients will be treated with medical uh, management, so um, uh, treatment such as a 5-ASA. Um, this is a, a medicine that will dampen down the inflammatory process in the bowel. If there is an acute, uh, meaning a very short and severe flare-up of the conditions, uh, then sometimes one has to get on top of that with uh, a short course of steroid uh, treatment and then to carry that on with the five ASAs. And in the majority of patients, that keeps things under control. If and when there is a flare-up of the condition, there may be the need to either change the medication or add in a short course of steroids again. But in some patients, this isn't sufficient, uh, in which case uh, there may be need for adding in additional treatments, such as a biologic. There may be need uh, for longer-term steroid treatment. But um, if, particularly in the latter case of needing long-term steroids, if that is the only way to keep the condition under control, then the role for surgery comes into play. So surgery is the, is the next uh, uh, treatment that we will offer patients with uh, ulcerative colitis. And really, as I say, it's either in those where medical treatment is not uh, able to keep things under control on its own, or where patients have really quite severe uh, symptoms 
And in some instances, the, the disease can uh, rapidly deteriorate, in which case urgent surgery is needed. Uh, and in those situations, when the bowel is then removed, or the colon, I should say, is removed with osteocolitis, patients often will then be able to come off of their uh, medical treatment. Um, with Crohn's disease, um, the situation is similar, but slightly different. Um, because of the tendency for Crohn's disease to affect any part of the bowel, um, treatment uh, is more tailored towards getting uh, the symptoms on control with medical treatment largely. So um, the majority of patients will have typically either small bowel disease or colonic disease. There will be some patients who have both and a significant proportion will also have perianal disease. So fissionating disease, etc. And so medical treatment will be aimed at keeping the inflammation in these sections of the bowel under control. And if the disease progresses such that you start to get complications from it, so uh, for Crohn's disease, for example, in, in perianal Crohn's disease, um, there may be perianal abscesses or infections and or a, a fistula. And so surgery will then come into play to drain any infection, to keep the fistulating disease under control thereby allowing the medical treatment to be more effective. Where disease in the bowel itself is progressing and with Crohn's disease, what tends to happen, particularly if there's long-standing and ongoing inflammation, the natural history of Crohn's is such that you have ongoing inflammation. The inflammation causes thickening of the bowel wall, which in turn can cause narrowing of the lumen, which is the actual the uh, tube down the middle of the bowel itself that can be narrowed down. And then subsequently with ongoing inflammation and healing, scarring occurs in the bowel wall, which itself can also cause narrowing. As you can imagine, that then causes significant or can potentially cause significant symptoms, obstructive symptoms of pain and so on. And then if that process continues, the disease can then almost extend through the bowel wall what we call penetrating disease, where it fistulates out of the bowel and potentially into adjacent organs. Again, in that situation, as you can imagine, medical treatment often isn't sufficient to get the disease uh, better. Uh, uh, and at best, sometimes we can only then keep the symptoms under control. But even then, the patients are so affected by the symptoms or the disease is progressing that surgery then needs to be employed and then surgery will be geared towards removing that advanced or severe diseased areas and the idea then is to restore the bowel continuity so if you imagine if you remove a section of bowel it's much like having a tube or a pipe you take a section away you then have two ends and you then have to join the bowel together and really a lot of the work uh, over recent years has been geared towards minimizing the risk to patients and trying to increase the likelihood of restoring continuity to the bowel such that patients won't need a stoma or typically called a bag uh, where the bowel content is, is diverted into the bag attached to the skin. And if that's even in situations where that is necessary, the vast majority of patients will go on to have the stoma closed uh, once the disease is uh, under better control. So the, in terms of the success of treatment, it depends on uh, what, which condition we're talking about. Uh, with ulcerative colitis, as we've said, um, where medical treatment is, is largely involved, it, the condition can be kept at bay. Uh, so it's not, again, not curing the patient, but the disease is kept to kept, kept under control and the symptoms are kept to a minimum. Where the medical treatment is unable to keep things under control and where surgery comes in, clearly when we carry out surgery and the large bowel is removed, the patient is in effect cured of the disease. So that is a very effective uh, treatment. Um, however, as you can imagine, patients when faced with the prospect of having the colon and the rectum removed, um, it is quite a major step for them to, to take on. 
Uh, in which case you then have to look at the other aspects. So when we talk about how effective it is, we look at the quality of life. And, and if you have the colon removed, you have an ileostomy. And some patients, an ileostomy is something they would like not to have as a long-term option. And surgically, we have other uh, potential uh, options available where if you, you can join the small bowel to a remnant of the rectum, if the rectum is not severely diseased, it's called an ileorectal anastomosis, or uh, when removing the colon and rectum, you can then fashion, in effect, a new rectum with what's called an ileoanal pouch or a J pouch. Um, and that will give the patients the opportunity to have the ileostomy closed, but that's not a guaranteed success. So, in terms of how effective is treatment with ulcerative colitis, um, well, there's a medical component, there's a surgical, uh, and we have to really factor in not just how effective this is to control the disease, but also have the impact it has on the patient's general well-being and their quality of life. And that really also is, is reflected in, in the management of patients with Crohn's disease, uh, probably even more so because we have to factor in likelihood that most patients with Crohn's will at some stage need an operation. And also the majority of patients at some stage will need to have further surgery. And the likelihood of surgery is, is, is variable and it will depend on the, the severity of their condition. And surgery over the course of 10, 20 years, as I say, is, is almost inevitable. And so the, uh, the uh, object of surgery where medical treatment is unable to keep things under control is to remove the disease or as much of the disease which is causing the problems, accepting that surgery is unable to cure the patient of Crohn's. And so it will be removing the active disease and then continuing management with medical treatment. And the object there being really to keep the patient's symptoms under control and to uh, get their quality of life as good as is possible, really. Where they, there is a perianal disease, often surgeries involve uh, geared towards uh, draining any infection and keeping any sepsis or fistulating disease, again, at bay, sometimes with the need for um, straining seat on sutures. And again, that coupled with medical treatment often keeps the disease at bay. 